Hi, my name is Peter Noel. I'm a designer in San Francisco, and I use Sketch for nearly everything I do. In this guest post on Sketchcasts, we will walk through an example from my recent article, Mastering the Bezier Curve in Sketch. Cubic Bezier is the technology that allows for beautiful curves in vector shapes. In order to use some of the tips and shortcuts from the article, we'll practice by tracing a letter form. First, take a photo of a beautiful letter you've drawn or seen around town and insert the image into Sketch. I suggest making it at least 1000 pixels in width and height so that the vector points are easy to fine tune in full pixel values. This also means we'll never need to zoom in beyond 6400%, something that Sketch just doesn't do. We'll start with the vector tool. You can access it through the insert dropdown in the toolbar or menu bar, or by hitting V on your keyboard. With the vector tool selected, let's outline the shape of our letter form. We can begin anywhere. I like to start at a natural corner or ending, if there is one. Wherever you click, a vector point will be added. If you click and drag, a vector point with Bezier handles will be added, with the handles extending as far as you drag them. One of the best practices when creating Bezier curves is to place your vector points at the outermost place on a curve. When tracing an image of a letter form, it might take a moment to find exactly where that outermost position is. Another best practice is to keep your Bezier handles perfectly vertical or horizontal. Sketch makes this easy. Just hold down the shift key while dragging your handles. Combined with placing vector points at the outermost place on a curve, horizontal and vertical handles will save you tons of time and headaches. Remember that this first pass doesn't need to be perfect. We'll refine the shape later. Sometimes you just can't use vertical and horizontal handles. On this part of the number 8, the letter form stops curving and continues at an angle. This process can take time, which is why we're practicing. I'll just speed through the rest of the shape. We click the first point, and the vector path closes. Time to refine it a bit. Let's change the border color to white so we can see the shape a bit better. While creating our shape, all Bezier curves defaulted to mirrored mode. This means that on each point, both handles are at the same angle, extending the same distance from the vector point. But this letter form has some more advanced curves, especially because it changes width. And we need to use the asymmetric option for one handle to be shorter than the other. This allows the curve to taper off more quickly on one side. Many of these curves can be improved by choosing the asymmetric option. Sketch has a hidden feature when working with Bezier curves that can prove incredibly useful when fine-tuning your shape. You may have noticed that clicking on a vector point 
updates the X and Y positions in the inspector. That gives you the coordinates for that specific point. What you can also do is click on a handle control point, the little dot at the end of the handle, and get its position. That's easy to miss because the handles don't change in appearance when you click on them. If you're ever uncertain that a handle is vertically or horizontally aligned with its vector point, just check both positions. This feature is also useful if you need to manually type in a value or make an incredibly minute adjustment to the handle. Here's an interesting thing. The bottom of the 8 here is pretty flat, and it doesn't seem to curve much in the middle. No matter how far away our Bezier handles extend, a single vector point won't be able to recreate this flatness. We need to create more vector points right alongside them. We'll choose the disconnected option for the handles, which allows each handle to be moved independently of the other. It also allows us to delete one of the handles. Just click on the handle control point and hit the delete key. Now our vector shape is closer to the original drawing. Personally, I like it more as a single curve and vector point, so I'm going to change it back. After creating our shape and cleaning it up a bit, it's time to look at it on its own. We'll hide the background image, turn off the shape's border, and turn on a fill color. It looks great, except for that odd hole in the center. What's going on? If you've read the article Harnessing Vector Awesomeness in Sketch, you'll remember that all vector shapes have a direction. A common solution for these unexpected results is to change the direction of a subpath. But this particular letter form is all a single shape. It doesn't have subpaths. The issue is that a single shape intersects itself going two different directions. The thick part is going clockwise and the thin part is going counterclockwise. Here's a secret. There are two different ways for a fill to be rendered on a vector shape. That's what this nifty little gear in the inspector allows you to change. The current approach is called even odd, and it is affected by the direction of the shape or subshapes. The other approach is called non-zero, and it fills in absolutely everything. That's better. By now, you may be suffering from the condition of looking at a letter too much. This also happens when you look at a word too much, and it's something that most designers encounter constantly. If you need to, take a break, grab a coffee, go for a jog, and come back to your project with fresh eyes. For this letter form, I've taken some time to further refine the shape departing slightly from the original sketch. When you're finished, make a 640 by 640 artboard, scale down your letter form, add a splash of color, and share it with the world on Twitter or Instagram using the hashtag SketchBezier. We all learn together, and we all need practice. I can't wait to see what you create.